So put your feet down so that we can get as low as we need to go. And see if you can use your not knowing to everybody can come to really not know. Because when we're trying to know, we usually get up here. It's like, if I could just figure out a little bit more, I'd get out of the unknown. And wouldn't that be great? Forget it. For the rest of your life, you will have this feeling of there's something going on here that I don't know. And I don't get it. Yes, there you go. Feel, like, feel how you start. Now, then you start to actually sink. And down, yeah, in the mystery, there's a self that sits in the dark and knows itself, feels itself as self. Here I am sitting alone in the dark. And what happens in the outside world almost doesn't penetrate. I go down here to wonder. That's Shudi Huang, what you're doing in your body now. Whereas the Bai Shao is much more up, it, it, it's still in my own self. I sit, yeah, exactly, the way you're looking at me. Like from inside your skin, like who the hell is she? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you'll let me into your inner world if you decide to. Like, that there's a certain level of the when people need by shall, one of the things that is that is really clear with them is every little thing sets them off. They're so bloody sensitive. You can't hardly do anything without affecting them in some way. They're like a walking pre-victim and get bent out of shape really easily because you did this and you did that and they can't just hold their own with it. Sorry, this, this woman who was in my Bradley birth class 11 years ago and uh, she was this six foot tall black <clears throat> attorney, black belt and I can't remember what, but her, <laughs> but her and, and she was a, a children's rights advocate attorney. So you can imagine what this tall, strong, black attorney used to face in the form of short white male hostility <laughs> on a daily basis. Okay. This, and, and she, I mean, she's just full and in herself and it didn't, and like any hostility that came her way was like it hit a trampoline. She wasn't shut down. She was just so full in her own skin that there's nowhere for the arrows to penetrate. Mm -hmm. She had when it was she she was going to give birth at the hospital in their like little birthing center hoo ha thing, and she had this birth plan all worked out with her doctor. She was doing it in the hospital because the family history of complications. She felt safe for that thing. Okay. She got she was in labor. She went to the hospital, and as soon as she got there and she saw the doctor, the doctor took the birth plan ripped it up and said, we're doing it my way. Oh, my. She said, no, we're not. <laughs> and she did almost all of her labor in the waiting room <laughs> by herself. Mm -hmm. And eventually, when she feels like she's crowning, she comes staggering in and she says, OK, I'm giving birth now. So they put her on some bed, strap a million monitors on. Apparently, she's. The, the, the um, amniotic sac had not yet burst, so they wanted to burst it. She's like, no. It, not a single five minute interval went by that some doctor or nurse was not trying to force her to do something that was not her idea, and that was just some kind of dumbass intervention they felt like doing. So she was continuously saying no to all this bullshit that was going on. And she's telling me this story afterwards with this little gorgeous little baby in her. And I'm, I'm so mad. I'm ready to start a posse. I'm ready. I'm like, I'm like, I can feel the rage boring new holes in my nose. I'm like, you know? My insides are curdling. I'm, I'm, I'm making liquid Drano in my gallbladder. <laughs> My liver is becoming an extra strength Brillo pad of sheer vengeful scrubbing. And, I, and somehow in the midst of that, I looked at her and I noticed that she was radiant. 
And I, and I looked at her and I said, I'm really bad. She said, yeah, I see that. <laughs> I said, you're not mad. She said, I'm not going to let some doctor spoil my first birth experience. Hmm. Shit. I had to give up. So in that moment, I can't tell you how much victim shit. <laughs> I saw that I had to give up in that moment. I was not happy about it. Wow, was it really comfortable when I could blame everybody else for what a lousy time I'm having because of what they're doing and how they're inconveniencing me, when actually what they are doing is being their half of life. And my job is to be the other half of life, to be my half of the situation and to keep on meeting life as my half of the situation and not go, eh, eh, by shall is really good for muscle cramps. Shuni Huang isn't particularly. Eh! I mean, muscle cramp, defensiveness, getting completely bent out of shape, but like, who's this harming? <laughs> <laughs> it's a total, that's what I mean by not holding my own. It's a really great herb. It's often used in formulas where for people who are blood deficient who catch colds a lot and of various exterior invasions, it's a it astringes the blood and says, no empty seats in the house. It's all occupied by me. I am fully filling in my contribution to my life. I can't control what you do. But I'm not going to shrink and get bent out of shape because of it either. I'm going to hold my own. I don't need to defend myself because the minute I get in a defensive posture, I'm bent out of shape. I'm shrinking. I'm dumb. Defensiveness is a form of being dominated already. People understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Take Martin Luther King Jr., okay? Not an iota of defensiveness. Not an iota. Just standing strong and making it clear that we have something to negotiate about here. This is unacceptable, it's not working for me. But meanwhile, I'm not going to let you dominate my life. So does it make a does it make sense of the difference of that like deep, dark, sitting in stillness, imperturbable, the bottom of the ocean? And then the sense of the bulk of an ocean. Hey, I walk into a room, an entire ocean comes into the room with me. And what's going on in the room is half of what I'm experiencing right now. The other half is a, is a, a great trampoline-hearted sense of, here I am. Half of, ready to meet, ready to work with, ready to let it bounce if it needs to, ready to say, no, nope. don't want pizza. It's like, as a person who's really had to work through the Bai Shao stuff, <laughs> I just remember how oppressed I used to feel by my, an ex of mine who just always knew what she wanted way faster than I did. She was like, let's da 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 da. She had a very strong wood element, really clear, let's da da da. And I'd be like, I, I couldn't even figure out what I wanted because it was such, always such a strong prevailing wind. I, and I just felt completely dominated. That's not her problem. It's really not her problem. From the inside, she, yeah, she wants that. Go ahead and want it, full tilt. By Shao Peony, can I fill in on the inside enough that I can feel that I have a secret garden and whatever winds are blowing out there, let them blow out there. Gee, what do I want? And in the fullness of bringing that to the situation, uninvadable and undominatable by anything from the outside. Come to meet without the need to defend, without the need to fight about it, and just to present. Actually, I'd really rather stay home tonight. Just work on the poem that I work started today. Make sense? <laughs>